Hello everyone and welcome to my young and restless gossip channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Sally accepts an offer from Spoiler and Sharon promising to fight for what's hers. Maria and Tessa had just put Aria to bed when Sharon arrives at the tack house. After the visit to the doctor, the infant was worn out. Maria is concerned that they are still in the dark. Even though an audiologist is on the way, they remain terrified and helpless. Sharon acknowledges how awful it all is, but she is adamant that now is not the time to freak out or give up. They confess while drinking tea that they all searched for worst-case situations online. They concur that was a horrible idea as well. Maria shifts the conversation to SNA. Maria won't give up, despite her mother saying it's complicated. When Sharon reveals that Adam is attempting a power play and the merger is already underway, she is taken aback. She knows that when a war starts, Victor typically sides with Adam. Right now, everything is uncertain. All of this strikes Maria as typical Adam. Sharon is determined to defend her ownership of the business. She has experienced a lot of Newman family drama and is skilled at surviving it. Her daughter longs to possess her courage. Tessa claims that she is the most courageous of the trio. Sharon continues that she never believes enough about herself. She assures them that whatever is happening to Aria is simply another test in life, but they are not in it alone and will overcome any obstacles. On the couch, they kiss and declare their love for one another. Tessa asks her wife if she wants to go outside and see some butterflies after Sharon departs. Although distracted, Maria concurs. They are both aware that they won't be able to sleep until they get answers regarding their daughter's hearing. Mariah can't help but feel that she ought to have caught anything earlier. She is going mad as the wheels turn. Tessa places a call after having an idea. Devin shows up soon after. He intended to visit and address any inquiries they might have regarding hearing loss. He embraces Mariah. Sally notices Nick dropping by her suite and immediately assumes he is not having a good morning. He tells her that he is not angry with her and then prepares to start complaining about his brother. However, they resolve to keep Adam off the table and avoid talking about Amir. She drags him to the bed and begins taking off his shirt to cheer them both up. In her apartment, Nick and Sally share a kiss. Y and R. They unwind after having sex, and she inquires about his offer to help her start a business. Nick affirms it by expressing his total faith and trust in her. She need not even provide him with a business strategy. This ensures that she won't be working with Adam, at least. Sally acknowledges that it wasn't an easy decision, but something didn't feel right about Adam's proposal. According to Nick, his brother works by isolating a person. When they realize they are talking about Adam once more, they switch the conversation to her and her company. Now she feels prepared for it. Before, it would have appeared as though she was abusing him. Her former self would have jumped on that. The new her is liked by them both. After losing the baby, she never imagined that she would smile once more. But thanks to Nick, she always beams. She is now able to dream and wish to nurture something of her own to leave to the children she hopes to have in the future because of his kindness and sensibility. He's confident she'll soar. They kiss because she likes that. They discuss their day's plans while they get dressed. If only he could persuade her to move in with him, he claims she would be a tremendous investment. She says they can only have one moment that changes their lives at a time while kissing him. More. Why and our piece discusses Nikki taking over. To meet with his father, Adam travels to the ranch. He is very explicit about wanting to lead Newman Media after this merger takes place. The merger was his idea, and he established that business. He is therefore deserving of the chair at the head of the table. Victor is not surprised by all of this, not even by his son's brashness. He wonders if Nick and Sharon were informed of Adam's gambit. His Adam tactics do not for impressive. his rudeness but maintains that he deserves this. That is arguable in Victor's opinion. He's changing the established dynamic between them. His kid suggests he listen to Nate rather than him and accuses him of trying to keep the carrot just out of reach. What actually is happening? Is this a form of retribution for the extortion scheme? This is about his son's tactics, Victor reiterates. What is ailing about him? Will he now withdraw and mope around? Although Adam doesn't believe he understands the reasoning, he will hold back until Victor changes his mind. Perhaps Nate will propose it and it will all of a sudden seem like a great idea. Adam chuckles. In any case, Audra is unnecessary. 
Victor acknowledges that there are too many cooks working for the company, but he doesn't promise to fire her. After Adam leaves, Nikki walks in and hears her husband give her a recap of the conversation. She worries despite his assurances not to. She has a suggestion, but she's unsure if he'll like it. Nick and Sharon should take the lead instead of Adam, according to Nikki. He considers that while furrowing his brow. Does Brittany Sarpy intend to leave Y and R? Esther working at Crimson Lights surprises Adam. In honor of her new position, she offers him a complimentary cappuccino. Sally enters by accident and informs him that she will not be working with him. She tells him she appreciates his offer and support, but she's still rejecting him as they sit down at a table. She will instead accept Nick's offer to finance her company. She needs to make something for herself now. Adam believes she will succeed, but he believes this is a mistake because Nick's funding means it won't be hers. She is adamant that she has faith in Nick. Adam is skeptical that his brother can avoid interfering. He and their father both possess it. Adam's job offer is declined by Sally, Y and R. When Nikki arrives, she is shocked to see Esther working the front desk. She inquires, hard times. Esther chuckles and declares that she is reinventing herself before suggesting that Nikki give it a shot. Where she is, according to Nikki, is fine. Esther informs her with excitement that given how well things are going for her, she doesn't see Sharon returning anytime soon. The former maid is advised by Victor's wife to postpone acquiring business cards. It appears as though Sharon's new company could take off. Esther is shocked by this. She screams, darn him, as she berates Adam. Double darn, Nikki agrees. They bemoan the fact that Nick is caught in the middle of Victor's son's attempts to complicate matters and his repeated assurances that he will be the son his father desires. To Esther, everything about the situation sounds problematic. She is currently depressed over the likelihood that her ideas for the coffee shop will fail. She intended to change the cuisine and hire a jazz trio. She has only been in charge for five minutes, Nikki says, so she will get over it. Nikki is greeted by Esther at Crimson Lights Y and R. At their meeting at Society, Sharon and Nick decide they can't allow Adam have what he wants. In order to keep one step ahead of him, they must predict how he would respond. She advises them to simply back out of the agreement. They have the ability to reclaim Kirsten and make it their own, free of Adam and Newman Media. They could have done that at first if they hadn't requested Adam to join them. It will be the same old struggle if they stay on the Newman course. Nick concurs but notes that the paperwork has been submitted and that Victor would be difficult to combat. Lawsuits and delays would result. But if they stayed, they would have to fight back each time Victor and Adam intervened. But with Adam and Victor involved, would it ever be feasible to make Kirsten into the company she had imagined? When they turn, Victor is standing there. Nick and Sharon are thinking about closing down YNR. Once Victor is seated, they warn him that they will leave if Adam is in charge. Sharon inquires about his intentions regarding her business. He acknowledges that it needs to be simplified so it can compete in the market. Nick wonders if the business or the management of the company is being discussed. More. Is a romance between Kyle and Victoria possible? Later, Sally sits with Nick on a couch and tells him about her encounter with Adam. He doesn't give a damn about how his brother feels and considers packing up the family items and concentrating on her career. She understands why he said that, but she makes it plain that she is not looking for a business partner, she is merely accepting his funds as an investment. There is no deal if she isn't in charge. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.